Kola Dacha. Kola Dacha. E S H A. Waku Telo. Waku Telo. Test, test, mic check. Test, test, one, two, one, two. How many ducky be? A petticin lay me chunt at the wog like a hunna pet shoes up. A matcha a steep to mile. A matcha a si chungo la cote, a chale diwahi ta sampe oyanke. I've been studying art for a very long time as a traditional artist. And so the items, the materials that I utilize in creating my art are naturalistic. Their hides, their feathers, their bones, their rocks. I make my own paint. I'm probably the only one that I know of in Omaha that understands this old process that has been going on for, for centuries. But I had to go through the mainstream. I had to obtain that fine arts degree specifically. And so this is when I came across uh, Carl Bodmer's paintings. And I was just fascinated on how meticulous his paintings actually were of adornment. We actually counted the feathers. We seen how they positioned the feathers. We looked at the types of feathers that they utilized. And so for me, I utilized Bodmer's paintings as, as the pictures, as the camera of the early 1830s, because there was no cameras on the plains. As indigenous people, we didn't have a written language. So our adornment was our written language. And so the way that we alter and notch and cut and split and paint and dot and stripe our feathers, it tells of our exploits and deeds carried out in war, raids, and hunts. The headdress that we're replicating, the painting is called Wakdigli. Wakdigli is to recount. And so in this adornment of feathers that was placed in his head, it told of his achievements in battle. Here is how I notched this feather. And so this is the first grade. The first grade is, and it explains that I was the first individual into that enemy's camp to actually touch them and count coup on them. These eagle feathers that are sticking outward have been marked. And so this is a tally. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so seven times he drew blood. And this is a practice that still exists today because we're still at war. There's a lot of our relatives who fought in Vietnam, in Korea, in World War II, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. If we carry out this way of life, these are the feathers that we still carry today. Our warrior societies, our language, everything was, was outlawed. They placed us on the reservations and they put our young generation into the boarding school. It wasn't until 1978 that we could actually speak our language, conduct our ceremonies, our rituals without being persecuted. A lot of atrocities have occurred against our indigenous relatives of Turtle Island, which is the United States. The knowledge of our warrior societies have slowly disappeared. I'm trying to revitalize a lot of these cultural teachings and bring back our stories of paraphernalia 
This is a dying art that I'm trying to pass on to whoever and however many people I can show. As indigenous people, we have to wait until our kids come to us and our grandkids come to us. There's not very many young men that are able to complete this Wak Digli or Wak I'm really happy and proud of my grandson for picking up this way of life. He actually uh, came to me and he asked me if he could learn a lot of these uh, traditional ways. And so Izzy's passion, I think, lies within the featherwork of, of the Northern Plains. Israel to my own matcha be naha la coach chaze woke our shale chila and matcha below. This way of life, I fell in love with it. It's who I am. I'm proud to be Lakota. There's not many people my age that know the things my grandpa taught me. And so I take a lot of pride in the knowledge that he shared with me. This is a uh, muscle fiber from a deer. What we do is we uh, tear it piece by piece, as you can see, it comes off. And then we put it in water, let it soak, and it'll become nice and durable. Then we're gonna take the wase, which translates to uh, red rock. It's our form of paint. And we mix that in the water, and then we uh, heat it up, and it makes our paint I myself, I'm, I'm getting up there. I'm still young, but I just have to be mindful and careful that I am able to document as much as this and pass it down. And so in my language, I utilize a very specific word, waktigli and wakiksuya. Wakiksuya is to never forget our voice, our language, our customs, and our traditions. Wakdigli is to recount, once again, not only our own personal exploits and deeds, but our relatives who were actually the first warriors of this country. Time keeps moving forward since you made your journey home.